John Paul's very It's difficult to watch this video of an Oregon child hurting himself in a fit of rage. 11-year-old Alex Eccles is severely autistic. His self-destructive behavior brought on by tuberous sclerosis, a genetic disorder that affects about 50,000 people in the U.S. It causes growths in organs, in Alex's case, primarily in the brain. Those growths can lead to seizures and autism. Alex can't communicate with words, making it difficult to understand what's troubling him. Indescribable. It was horrifying. He was able to just be acting normal and all of a sudden just run himself to a wall. His parents have turned to a controversial treatment, medical marijuana, to manage Alex's behavior. When you've got no other options, are you honestly going to say no? It wasn't always this way, though. He was actually going to be Jake for the longest time, and when he was born, we saw him and said, that's not Jake, that's Alex. The day Alex was born, Jeremy and Karen Eccles were full of hope until six weeks later, when their baby had his first seizure. We didn't know he was going to be autistic at that time. I think he was three the first time he started hurting himself, though. By the time Alex was five, it was intense, self-directed rage. Alex headbutted anything he could, bruising his forehead so badly, his father says the blood would drain until Alex's entire face was black and blue. They got him a helmet, swaddled him like a newborn, tried mood-altering drugs. But Alex's daily violent behavior became the Eugene family's new normal. When he was eight, they made the heartbreaking decision to move Alex into a state-funded group home. It was like we were throwing him away. Like we were just giving him to somebody else and saying, sorry, buddy, you know, you're not part of the family anymore. It was, um, it was pretty rough. But was there a way to help him, to bring back this smiling boy? Alex's parents looked into Oregon's medical marijuana program, and a doctor approved Alex. Alex is now one of about 50 Oregon children with a card like this. While autism is not a qualifying medical condition like cancer or severe pain, in Alex's case, the seizures are. And after a few months of treatment, the Eccles say they saw a dramatic improvement. He went from hitting himself, blooding his face, Within an hour, hour and a half, he would be playing with toys, using his hands, something that at that time was almost unheard of. This is an extremely rare occurrence for Alex. Alex's group home won't give him the marijuana, so about three times a week, his parents give him a liquid form of the drug. Oregon law does not require a doctor to monitor a child's medical marijuana use. In fact, Alex's neurologist at Dornbecker Children's Hospital didn't know about the alternative treatment until we told him. Did it surprise you that they were trying something like this? No, I don't think so at all. I, I, I certainly am very much with them in my desire to help Alex. All of us want to help Alex. Alex's doctor didn't speak directly about the controversy of using medical marijuana on children, but the American Academy of Pediatrics is against it. A doctor representing that group tells me that marijuana is toxic to children's developing brains, and there isn't enough known about the drug's long-term effects. For us, the long-term side effects that are unknown for something that can't kill him are a lot better than the long-term side effects of him beating himself bloody. The Eccles also say they're not advocating the use of medical marijuana for all autistic children, but they say walk a mile in their shoes, and the treatment might not seem so extreme. Yeah, look at your little sister. Alex's parents say that they videotaped his episodes to prove that his injuries were self-inflicted. They've created a website about Alex's journey that includes a blog with updates, and we have a link to that on our website, kptv.com. So there is an inconsistency there. And, and, and incidentally, I figured out one thing, is that medicine, you know that medicine for a long time, you had an expert problem in medicine. You still have some expert problem in medicine. Medicine killed more people than it saved, particularly in the late 18th century, uh, late uh, 19th century, okay, till discovery of penicillin, okay. And why? Because of something I call the illusion of control. And if by going to a doctor, by going to a doctor, 
you, 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 know, you wanted to do something, going to a doctor to do something, you hurt yourself. So going to a, a, the temple of Apollo or something like that, or any form of religion, so long as it takes you away from a doctor, is going to be beneficial for you. <laughs> All right? So that, that's, that's the idea of religion. People don't, that's, I, I have a notion of religion that sort of conflict with the rest. Call me crazy one more time. Horrible um, drug industry that has been uh, perpetuated in this country, which has um, just eroded morality in so many ways. And, you know, like you mentioned, though, the one thing is that marijuana was forbidden, so strong, and I certainly was never exposed to it. It was strictly forbidden. It was strict. It is strictly forbidden in our military, and yet at this point, there's a huge movement in our society where it's been being used medicinally, and that medicinal use is expanding into medicinal psychological use because they're finding that it's helping our soldiers with PTSD. It's helping people to be able to, you know, to have the neural pathways open back up, that mind expansion aspect of it. Um, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely just now coming to light. And with that, light, I think we're going to be a lot more awareness. We have reached a landmark settlement with the nation's largest bank.